Hello. Hello, everybody. How many of you speak Spanish? OK, perfect. Well, we got here a trophy because uh, uh, today, this morning, we had a, a, a tournament of soccer, and our team won the trophy, the Spanish team, the FOGA team. I'm sorry for the Argentina and South Africa, the rest of the team. We won the trophy. <laughs> Next year, maybe. <laughs> Well, thank you for coming to this session. Uh, and first of all, first of all, let, in, uh, let me introduce to us. My friend is Juan Garrido, and I'm Chema Alonso. We are, uh, we are working in a, a small company in Spain called Informatica 64. And before, that, before starting with the topic, we would like to, to introduce our country. We are from Spain. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> It's a small country, a small country. This is a small country in the middle of everything. We are in the middle of Europe and Africa and South America because of our, our history. And if you never went to Spain, you have to go there. I'm from Madrid, which is a very nice city. It was the capital of the big empire five centuries ago. <laughs> But it's a very nice city, and if you go to Madrid, you will never be a foreigner, because if you go to Madrid, you are from Madrid, so come to our city. And Juanito is from another city. It was the capital of the Arabic Empire in the seventh century, when Spain was an Arabic country, a lot of centuries ago. And, in, and from that tower is the, the Gold Tower, the first, the, first, uh, the first tower on the left is where the gold from America came to Europe. That's the gold tower. It's on Sevilla. And Sevilla is very famous because of the parties, because of the flamenco, and so on. And especially, uh, there are big monuments. This is one of the most famous monuments in, in Sevilla. It's the Plaza de España. Probably uh, all of you know this monument. And you have to visit it, because it's a monument in which you will fall in love. Because if Anakin Skywalker could fall fell in love in Sevilla, you can do it also. So don't forget to visit our country. <laughs> well, and Juanito is from a very small area of Sevilla, which is Triana. Triana is a republic, in, uh, an independent republic in Sevilla, and it's very famous for the Holy Week because they are very religious, and there are thousands of people carrying the images, and of course after that having drinks. <laughs> Well, uh, in our, uh, we work in Informatica 64, and probably uh, some, of the, some of you have, have been listening about FOCA, which is one of the tools that we develop, and it's a free tool that you can use for extract information, pen testing, and so on. Tomorrow we are going to deliver a, a workshop of eight, eight hours with a new version, which is the version 3. So if any of you want to attend, I'm not sure if you can uh, book for a, for a seat, but you can ask for it. Uh, what is the topic that we are going to talk today? Well, we are going to talk about something which is, uh, is very, very, um, very common, which is the remote application using, using Citrix and terminal services. There are a lot of, uh, a lot of work done uh, previously about this topic, about Citrix application and Windows terminal services, but uh, we still believe that it is important because nobody is taking care about it and, well, nobody. Uh, a lot of people has an insecure environment, and we are going to see how easy a hacker can get into a, a company just using this kind of environment. So first of all, it's very easy to discover the, the entry point of a company just searching for a remote application or remote connection on Google. Just searching for RDP files, you can discover almost 2,000 places almost 2,000 servers publishing applications. <clears throat> of course, you can discover also government sites. Government with term remote application that you can just click on it and test it. We'll see what happens. <clears throat> well, you can do the, the same, more or less the same in, in Bing. In Bing, you cannot use the extension modifier, but you can use the file type. This is a TXT file, and searching for uh, any of the modifiers which uh, appears in all the files, you can discover thousands of, of remote applications. So some of the places that we discover with these with this, with, with this remote applications 
are from the government. This, one, this is one of the, the sites, is the patrol order management system. It's a dot .mil domain here in the States. But we were, we were going to do a demo with this <laughs> server, but we were talking to Jeff, and Jeff found something, someone, and today is fixed. I don't know why. <laughs> but, but we are going to do the demo with the California Transportation, <laughs> Department of Transportation, which is another, another site. <clears throat> well, just reading the websites, you can discover the remote, remote application. There is a Nika file, and you can download the file and just click on it. We'll see what happens. Up. I promised five minutes ago it was working. <laughs> five minutes ago it was working. Maybe Moss was pointing. And well, no problem. We are going to do a lot. Uh, the next demo. Don't worry. <laughs> Well, our secure this environment, well, as we are going to see, there are a lot of things to, to worry about, and it's very complicated to secure all the environment. And, well, this picture with the demo is, 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 doesn't make sense, but after. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Sorry? Ah. Oh. Are you sure? No. I don't learn it five minutes ago. <laughs> okay, let's let's don't learn it again. But I we don't learn it five minutes ago. So California transportation. Routing database. Here it is, called trans. No, no. <laughs> they fix it. <laughs> Five minutes ago, it, it was working, believe me. Well, don't worry. Well, one of, the, one of the, the biggest problems with these files, these configuration files, is the verbosity. Just reading the files, which are TXT files, you can discover a lot of crap information, like internal IP address, users, encrypted password. You cannot use that uh, password. Uh, you can uh, extract the password from the encrypted password, but you can get access to the system using a, an anonymous uh, account or a user account in the system. I, so these files are perfect for APTs, just for the people who is collecting information or for uh, prepare uh, some special attacks, like the evil grade attack. Just searching on the internet for this kind of files, just searching for an ICA file, you can search for, what's it? X, ICA, and just searching for documents with ORNT, you can discover files with the password for Oracle just in the text. So you don't need, you don't need to, know, to do any special. There are a lot of information in that file. So due to this, we, we decided to add uh, this kind of files to FOCA, which is uh, our tool for information gathering and for fingerprinting information about uh, websites and companies. And right now, if you download, no, tomorrow, if you download tomorrow the FOCA 3 version, you will see that in the new version, FOCA is searching for this kind of file and extracting information and so on. <laughs> the, the second big problem is that it's, it's a TXT file, so uh, whoever, whoever has the file can modify the information and can uh, try to um, to get access to another, uh, another parts of the operating system. So just modify the, the configuration file and generating error messages on the server, you can discover something like all the application in the operating system. We 
you only need to create a, a logic with the error messages and uh, um, terminal services and Citrix services and Citrix server has different error messages when you cannot get access to the file uh, than when you cannot, uh, you, uh, the file is not on the server. So just trying to ask for application, you can extract the whole list of application installed in a computer. To do this in terminal services is quite simple because there is a, a modifier which is alternative shell. This, uh, this option was created uh, for versions of the RDP protocol previous to version 6, but it, is this, it, is, it exists still in the, in the RDP files of terminal servers 2008. It doesn't work, but the option, it is there. So you can ask for an application and the terminal server will say, okay, you cannot use this, op you cannot access this program because the alternative cell is forbidden. But you will receive different error messages. So if you receive uh, acceso de negado, which is in Spanish, because Spanish is better, you know that the file, <laughs> The file is in the operating system, but if you receive, you cannot get, uh, uh, you cannot access to this file, you know that this file is not in the server. So the good thing is that uh, you can do the same in Citrix, and there is, there is n uh, any protection against uh, one connection and another connection and another connection, and you don't have even to type a CAPTCHA. So you can optimize, optimize this, uh, this procedure with a tool. We created Kaka, which is. <laughs> Computer assisted Citrix apps. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just it's just a tool to do it this, so you only need to open Kaka. <laughs> select one uh, one uh, ICA file, a list of application in this example, notepad, uh, break edit, command, no exits, and calc. And Kaka and the number of threads that you want, want to use in parallel, and Kaka will do this for you. So you can go to have a coffee. Kaka is working. Kaka is working. Well, Kaka is trying to <laughs> Kaka is trying to open the the application, and the only thing that Kaka is doing is having a snapshot. So then, when Kaka finished, <laughs> you only have to review the error messages. <laughs> so it, uh, of this way, you know if the application exists or not. You can, you can use a very big list of applications and leave Kaka running on a computer for one day. And the end of the day, you got your list of applications in, in Kaka. <laughs> Well, quite simple. The other, the other thing with terminal, uh, terminal application is the, what we call playing the piano. In the terminal services environments and citrus environment, there are too many links, to too many um, um, environment uh, variables, too many shortcuts, too many options that uh, allows to a hacker to get and a special part of the system that the system administrator uh, didn't, thought, didn't think at the beginning. One of our favorites is Windows Server 2008 because Windows uh, Server 2008 wants to help you everything. So if you ask for an application which is not in the operating system, Windows 2008 shows you an error message with a help button. <laughs> Would you like help? Why not? <laughs> So just clicking on help, the, the, help and the help application appears. And in this application, you got a lot of links to open Internet Explorer or to open the open file panel and run commands and so on. Uh, playing the piano was a very, very nice thing to do with a lot of shortcuts uh, to access different parts of the of the operating system, but right now we got more and more shortcuts, sticky case, which is a funny thing, just clicking on, on, on shift K three or four times, the operating system will show you the sticky case menu, which is within the control panel, so even if you don't have access to the control panel with the sticky keys, you will be able to configure all the control panel of the operating system, just clicking on shift and so on. Is easy to, to do this? Well, let's do a demo with the a demo with 
Citrix. So, well, this is the website of Citrix, <laughs> but this is the website for demo servers. So it's a demo, it's legal. <laughs> we got a user here, which is Tonto del Culo. It's, and it's, it's, it's a Spanish name. <laughs> The rest of the username name was taken. <laughs> yep. No. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. No, no, no. No, it is working. <laughs> Well, this is the environment. As you can see, in this environment, we got a lot of application. We are going to use Excel because this talk is about Excel. So let's go to the <laughs> Office application and run Excel. Excel is working. Well, Excel is working. <laughs> well, right now, the system is downloading the client component, so. so. Open Excel. Launch. You have to open Launch. No? Maybe. No, no, no. Execute. Okay. On launch. Well, something with Internet Explorer. But we are going to launch the Excel. <laughs> Excel is working, believe me. I start in Microsoft Excel. Internet is slow. No. No, man. I disconnect our VPN. No, no, no. No, no, no. Where is Excel? What? Oh my God. Well, okay, it is working at least in the end. Well, now connect to the to the remote Excel. Come on, please. If someone is doing a man in the middle attack in this network, please don't do it. <laughs> Moxie. Oh. What happened with the internet here? It's more slowly. No. In English. It's <laughs> more slowly. Ah. Fucking internet connection. <laughs> hey, hey, just open Excel. We didn't <laughs> do anything. <laughs> okay, yeah, open. Well, this is the Citrix environment. It's supposed to be secure by the guys of Citrix. So let's try to, I don't know, use the environment variable to connect to the system root. 
It's forbidden to the user profile. It's forbidden and so on. But you can do a lot of tricks. One of the tricks that we do was just to create a shortcut to the command finish all so all files and then run open. <laughs> oh. oh they fix it. Ah no PowerShell. Too many consoles. Too many consoles. PowerShell. Let's change Now we are going to use another console. <laughs> Same trick, another console. Open. It is yeah. working. Well, <laughs> go to the. And you get access to all. It's very complicated because every day the operating system is getting more and more complex, and the application that we are publishing through then are more and more complex. Please stop, 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 stop. Close this. Don't trust in people from Sevilla, believe me. <laughs> well, the question is that the operating system is more and more complex and the applications are getting more and more complex. So every application that you are publishing through terminal services is a path to your operating system or termin uh, through terminal services. One of our favorites is uh, the complex application. And of course, Excel is one of the most complex applications that uh, companies are publishing through remote application services. So the good thing is that Excel is a very powerful tool. And bosses love Excel because you can do a lot of funny graphics and analyze a lot of data, connect Excel to databases, perform data mining, and a lot of things which are very good for the business. And the good is that to do all that funny things, you need Visual Basic for applications. If you remove Visual Basic for application from your uh, Excel, your Excel becomes another kind of application, but Excel no more. So the idea is that with Excel, you can do a lot of things. Let's do the first demo just and in, this, in local. We got uh, a Windows 2008 with Hyper-V, no, uh, with Terminal Services, sorry. And we, in this environment, we published Excel 2007. In, uh, Excel 2007, the, we didn't use Excel 2010 because the security policy for macros are more or less the same. The main difference in security in Office 2010 and Office 2007 is about the sandbox, about the, the security option when you download the, a file from an unsecure location from the internet and so on. But once you, you have the file in your machine, in your computer, the security policies for macros are the same. So. In this environment, we are going to execute just uh, an Excel with macros. In a normal environment, in a normal environment when Excel is uh, going to be executed in your local machine, the, uh, sec uh, the security option by default is that uh, the user select if wants to execute the macro or not, because the user is running the macro on his machine. But in a terminal service environment, in a remote application environment, the security option by default, which is case by case, the user decide, is a bad option because the user is running the visual basic for application not in uh, their machine, but in the server machine, which is completely different. In this environment, we are going to execute just uh, a file with visual basic for applications. Tails, it is working. Well, in this example, we created a, a panel. And this is the by default option. The user decide, OK, enable this content on, or not. OK, enable. It's not my machine. <laughs> so, so now you can. If, if the boss came, you, you can show the graph. It's, it's, it's a good trick. Then open the, the panel. <laughs> so just, you can do a lot of things with Visual Basic for application. For instance, uh, see the process and so on. As you can see, close, 
you through the you, uh, through the Windows management instrumentation you can through commands res retrieve the results and show it so then on the Excel file. Okay, let's close it. So it w we go back to the presentation. <clears throat> well, uh, after seeing this demo, it's clear that you have to take care about the security. In, of Excel in remote environment. One of the first things that system administrator, administrators should, uh, tend to do is to block some special consoles, like Command Con, like uh, PowerShell, uh, WMI, and so on. But there are too many consoles, and, and in Windows Server 2008, the backup uh, directories copy all those uh, consoles, which uh, uh, that um, that um, it creates a double problem because you have the double of consoles. But in this environment, we got in this environment, we are going to have all the consoles forbidden. We got uh, and using uh, ACLs and using uh, server restriction policies, we are going to uh, forbid all the consoles that you are going to see. But we can use consoles even from other operating systems. This is a trick that was published by the dear Stevens, and the idea is that you can inject a DLL into your Excel file, and that DLL is a common interpreter. So just uh, invoking the common interpreter from your DLL, you are going to have access to the server. So let's do a demo with this. So if we go to the Windows Server 2008 and try to, uh, to server, and try to execute uh, command con, it is forbidden. It is forbidden. But in the Excel file that we are going to open, we got a DLL of Reactos and also a, a DLL for the registry, uh, registry ed editor of Reactos. So just open the file and open the command line. Now the Excel file is uh, extracting the DLL to execute it, and we are going to obtain the Reactos command interpreter. <laughs> Excellent working. I hope. Well, <laughs> here it is. So you can see we got the Reactos command interpreter, and it's like the common, like the common uh, interpreter of Windows 2008, and, and more or less the same. So this is a good trick. So go back to the slides. Ah, and of course, in the tax manager, you cannot see the CMD because it's a DLL which had been loaded by the Excel file. So it's not in the, in the tax manager. The user is only working with Excel, <laughs> which is good for the company. <laughs> So go back to the slides. The slides. So, of course, as, after seeing this demo, some of you uh, could think, okay, we are going to disable all the macros for, uh, for my machine. If you use the first policy, which is disable Visual Basic for application, is for all Office application, not only for Excel, it's for Word, PowerPoint, Access, and so on. And for Excel, you got four options. The first one is execute all macros, which is unsecure. The second option is case by case, the user decides. Of course, if the user is the attacker, it's an unsecure option. The third one is no macros at all. So in this demo, we are going to select the no macros at all in an Excel file published through a remote environment. So we go to the Windows 2008 and select. We are going to, to log off the idle connection of the user. OK. And now we go to the policies. And we are going to enable the policy and select no, no macros. No warnings for all macros. The third one, no warnings for all macros, but disable all macros. Okay, no warning and macros off. So select that option. Okay, apply the policy. Okay, Active Directory is working. <laughs> Go back to the client and open the file. And this is one of my favorite <laughs> tricks. 
So when you open the document, when the document, the document is, is opened, you will see how it's impossible to execute anything because everything is forbidden. Try to do anything? No, it's forbidden. You cannot do anything. But there is something special with Excel. There are trusted locations. A trusted location is a path in which security policies are not applied. <laughs> so you only need to save the document in a trusted location. And of course, the trusted location are in the user uh, profile. So let's save the document. We are going to use uh, a, a trusted location. In the, you, can, you, you can have trusted location in the client machine or in the server machines. It doesn't matter. If the document is open from a trusted location, the, all the security policies will disappear. So we are going to save in one of the most famous uh, trusted location, which is the default book. When you open a new file, with the, there is a template. So we are going to copy the, here, save, close this document. And then close, and then open the document from the our trusted location. <laughs> and here it is. <laughs> well, no macros at all. <laughs> it's not macros at all. Well, after seeing this demo, there is a solution: no trusted location at all. <laughs> Well, after seeing this demo, maybe the system administrator can trust in digitally uh, signed macros, only macros that had been digitally signed for a trusted uh, certification authority. So let's do a demo <laughs> with this. <laughs> in this example, we are, we are going to select the four options. Remember, fair, fair option, all macros. Second option, case by case. Third option, no macros. And fourth option is and um, only digitally signed macros. So let's log out the either session and then go, 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 go. Digitally signed macros. Okay. Okay. Go, go, go. Apply. Okay. After directory is working. <laughs> We can play in my sweeper. Meanwhile, <laughs> well, we got a digitally signed uh, Excel file, but it's a self-signed Excel file, and we are going to obtain this message. Well, we obtain a warning because it's self uh, signed. It's not from from a trusted authority. And the one the before be, uh, be, you got help protect me from a no content ban. There is a link, a link for show signature details. So just click on the link. Here is the digital uh, the digital certificate. So if we go to view certificate and the certification path, we can discover the, uh, the root of the certification authority. And we can view the certificate of it. So view the certificate. Ah, we can install the certificate because <laughs> it's at user level. Perfect. Install the certificate. Next. It's at user level, so no problem at all. And now the message will change to enable this content. <laughs> and the last one is the, the funny one is trolls all documents for. This is. <laughs> this is very important because with this option you can start the third war, uh, war, uh, world war. Because. If you, in this example, we created a, a SIA that we installed right now. And if you install this SIA, uh, every document signed by this SIA will be OK. And in the, in the uh, digital certificate, there is a link 
for the CRL. And the CRL is a link that could be an HTTP link, an LDAP link, and an HTTP link could be a SQL injection attack. So if you install ASIA and send an Excel file with a digital signed uh, uh, macro for to someone relevant in the company and he opened or, or he or she opened the document, automatically the crypto API will try to connect to the CRL. So if you discover, for instance, a SQL injection vulnerability in, uh, I don't know, in the core of China, for instance, and you can install one of these rogue SIA <laughs> in one of the DHA's machines, and you send a file to a user which is working in that machine, you can discover who users are working in what machine using FOCA. <laughs> you can start the third world war. Well, just kidding, but we are going to do the demo in log. <laughs> <laughs> so in this example, that uh, trusted authority has, uh, has now the, the CRL, so we are going to, uh, to open a netcat, and we are going to send the document to a user. In this environment, it's the same user, but uh, the problem is that in, in remote application environments, there are a pool of users that are shared for the rest of the, the user. So we are listening, and let's see if the query... Okay. Okay, as you can see, there is a message. Notice PHP ID fa equal fi sat down uh, minus minus hello Aurora. I don't know, whatever. So in the end, as you can see, it's very complex. It's very difficult to harden a, an environment with remote applications. So if you got a terminal services environment publishing a lot of application or a citrus environment, the first thing that you have to do is reevaluate the security of the whole environment. Reevaluate the security of all documents. Of course, uh, you have to uh, trust it in nobody, not in nobody, even in nobody, because in some internal, in some operating system, nobody could be dangerous. And be sure about the, docu the application that you are publishing. One of the funny things that we discover is that in terminal services, with the TSA terminal services web access, a lot of administrators are using this option, which is hide in terminal server web access. That means that if you have uh, a remote application published on your terminal services, this application won't appear in the uh, HTTP panel, but the application is still published. So if you know the name of the application, you can connect to that application. And that's all. Thanks for standing here. <laughs>